What is up, my friends? It's Spooky Loops, and I hope you're having a fantastic day so far. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you all the ins and outs of one of my favorite killers in Dead by Daylight, the Ghostface. Ghostface is one of four playable killers in Dead by Daylight that have the ability to become undetectable and use stealth to engage their targets. And well, today I'm going to show you how to do that. But first, let's talk about his power. The Ghostface's power is called Night Shroud and comes packing a very unique set of talents. When Night Shroud is activated, Ghostface will gain the undetectable status effect, meaning he emits no heartbeat and no red stain, giving him the advantage of sneaking up on survivors. While in stealth, you will then have the ability to stalk and mark your opponents. Once a survivor is completely marked, then they will suffer from the exposed status effect for 45 seconds, making them a one hit down. Sounds pretty simple, right? Well, here's some things you should know. As cool as it is being undetectable, there are plenty of ways to get knocked out of your power. Survivors are able to reveal you from up to 32 meters away. However, they must be able to see at least 25% of your body, and it takes 1.5 complete seconds to do so. Whenever someone is looking at you while you're in stealth, you'll be given a visible and audible cue that someone has their eye on you. If the survivor is able to successfully reveal you, Killer Instinct will kick in, showing the location of the survivor for two seconds. Remember, you may not visibly see a survivor on your screen, but due to the third-person perspective, they can reveal you from around corners, so stay cautious. However, if a survivor enters a locker, they will not be able to reveal you once inside. Oh, and don't forget, survivors that are on hooks can also reveal you. Figured you might want to know that. Getting revealed isn't the only way to put your power on cooldown. Landing a successful attack, missing an attack, and grabbing a survivor off a gen or out of a locker will all deactivate Night Shroud for 30 seconds. Now let's talk about stalking. Once you've activated Night Shroud, you'll have the ability to stalk survivors. It takes 5 seconds to completely mark a survivor, as long as your target is at least 25% visible. But the most efficient approach to this is stalking from a lean. Ghostface is the only killer in the game with the ability to peek around corners, and just like the pig, he can also crouch. When stalking a survivor from a lean, you mark them 50% faster, and it doesn't matter if you're standing or crouched. To do this, you have to make sure Night Shroud is activated. When close to a corner, you'll see the option to lean and stalk. Using your secondary option will grant you the ability to peek around corners. You can lean from the majority of surfaces in the game, but some are more awkward than others. Ghostface can stalk survivors from a max distance of 40 meters, which is 8 meters more than the survivor's range of revealing you. Stalking is not unique to one survivor at a time, and when surveying large areas, don't be surprised if you mark multiple survivors. Here's a pro tip. Each survivor has their own marked meter displayed on your HUD. You decide how much and when you want to fill that meter. Your stalk progress will stay marked on the survivor for as long as they don't get injured, and it does not regress. So here's what you do. Your best strategy is to stalk a survivor as much as you can without actually exposing them, and then mark them completely at a closer proximity, giving your opponent little time to react. The ghost face is relatively map dependent and doesn't mesh well in large open environments. That's why always cutting off line of sight with survivor is key. At times survivors can reveal you before you're able to make a successful mark, and cutting off line of sight even in chases will be your best approach to sealing the deal. We all know that injured survivors are much easier to put down than healthy ones, and yes, you can still apply markings to an injured survivor for later. But I found it more effective to use Night Shroud as a means of mind gaming your opponent. When in chase with an injured survivor, activate Night Shroud as a way to mute your red stain and take advantage of the survivor's loss of information. In regards to chases, the ghost face has a base movement speed of 4.6 meters per second in and out of Night Shroud, and takes a 25% movement debuff while crouched. So it's not recommended chasing survivors while crouching. Now we went over how during Night Shroud the ghost face loses all tear radius and red stain, but he isn't completely silent. The wisping of his streamers and footsteps can still be heard within close proximity. So plan to make your move before the survivor realizes this.
so now that we have a better understanding on how he's played, let's take a look at a loadout. There are a lot of different builds that complement all different types of play styles with the Ghostface. But here's what I run regularly. Corrupt Intervention blocks the three furthest generators from me, pushing survivors into my terror radius. Enduring decreases my stun duration by 50% whenever I'm hit with a pallet in a chase. Save the best for last allows me to decrease my wipe animation by 5% every time I hit someone that is not my obsession. And Whispers is a fantastic perk that provides directional information to pinpoint survivor locations. Just like all killers in Dead by Daylight, the Ghostface has an arsenal of add-ons to improve his base kit, but there are only two that are my favorite. Lasting Perfume increases survivor staying marked from 45 seconds to 55 seconds, giving you some extra time to down them if need be. And Chewed Pen decreases your Night Shroud recovery rate from 30 seconds to 22 seconds. So that's pretty much everything. We've learned how his power works and how to play him in the most efficient way. I hope you found this guide useful and let me know what your favorite Ghostface build is down in the comments. If you ever want to catch a Ghostface game live, I do stream full-time on Twitch. You can catch me over at twitch.tv slash spookyloops. Big shout out to my patrons for being amazing, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.